Hello and welcome to today's news bulletin. I'm Julia Cosby. Let's take a look at the headlines. Protests outside of hospitals across Canada against public health measures were met with condemnation from politicians. Michael Gilpatrick filed a lawsuit alleging that he was abused at the former Youth Development Centre in Manchester. A United Nations official has said that the Taliban in Afghanistan have gone against their promises. Dozens of staff members have left their jobs at a local hospital in upstate New York because of recent vaccine mandates. Professors at Stanford University are calling for the U.S. to stop the China Initiative, a program that tries to find Chinese spies within academia. North Korea has successfully tested long-range cruise missiles. Multiple reports of gender-based violence in Western University are under investigation. Scientists are urgently collecting climate change records contained in glacier ice before climate change melts it away. In Canada, a series of protests critical of mandatory COVID-19 vaccines occurred outside of hospitals across the nation. The organizer of this event, calling themselves Canadian Frontline Nurses, put up notices across 10 provinces for silent vigils against what they call government overreach. Amongst their complaints, this group, allegedly made up of nurses and healthcare workers, are against the mandatory COVID-19 vaccines. In response, Ontario Premier Doug Ford and Toronto Mayor John Tory have strongly condemned these protests. In fact, Ford said in a tweet, These protests we're seeing outside of hospitals are selfish, cowardly and reckless. The Registered Nurses Association of Ontario and Ontario Medical Association also condemned these protests calling for the creation of designated safe zones surrounding the hospitals where staff and patients can be protected. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has since vowed to make it a crime to obstruct patients' ability to access health care or to intimidate those who work in health care or their patients. In other news, potentially hundreds of lawsuits have been filed regarding the abuse at the former Youth Development Centre in Manchester. Michael Gilpatrick has alleged that he was physically and sexually abused and is suing the state. Turning to Afghanistan, a United Nations official said that going against their public promises, the Taliban have begun to order women to remain at home, preventing teenage girls from attending school, and have started to go door to door searching for their former adversaries. In fact, there have begun some reports that the former Afghan military personnel have been murdered, the UN staff have received threats, and those who worked for U.S. companies are being searched for. In New York, dozens of staff members have left their jobs because they refused to get vaccinated. For some context, former Governor Andrew Cuomo mandated that every healthcare worker in the state should get their first dose of COVID-19 vaccine by September 27th. Since 30 staff members have resigned from the hospital, Lewis County General Hospital announced that they will be pausing their maternity services. Moreover, 165 workers at the hospital have yet to get their vaccine and have not disclosed what their plan is for the upcoming September deadline. In the U.S., professors at Stanford University are calling for an end to the China Initiative. This program, put into place during the Trump administration, began in 2018 with the aim of preventing China from stealing U.S. technology. However, 177 Stanford faculty members signed a letter to the Justice Department arguing that the program has deviated from its intentions. Instead, they claim that the program undermines the competitiveness of the U.S. technology and research and has given rise to issues of racial profiling. Turning now to North Korea, the Korean Central Agency claimed that they have successfully tested newly developed long-range cruise missiles, which can hit targets from a distance of 1,500 kilometers away. North Korea has argued that they need weapons to deter threats from the United States and from South Korea. Moreover, there was no known testing for months since Kim has been dealing with the coronavirus, an economy damaged by sanctions, flooding and border closures. Both the U.S. and South Korea are analyzing the North Korean launches. Back in Canada, multiple reports of gender-based and sexual violence at Western University, London, Ontario over the weekend have led students living on campus to express feelings of being unsafe. The university launched investigations into the events that took place while revamping the security and staff presence in residences. The events which occurred in Sydenham Hall led some first-year students to feel overwhelmed and frustrated. The police have also begun to go around residences investigating allegations that involve mass drugging and sexual assaults during the university's orientation week. Angry students have been taking on social media to demand Western University implement better protocols to protect their students. 
Finally, scientists are working quickly to try and collect ice cores as global warming melts glaciers and ice sheets. These cores are used to understand previous climates, which is important for understanding and tracking climate change. They do this by capturing a record of greenhouse gases. If the glaciers continue to melt, this means that they are no longer gathering snow and are unable to capture atmospheric gases for scientists to study now or in the future. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on our latest content.